Well, it's going to be another thinking out loud video and I made, I don't know, two or three thinking out loud videos. My original ones were about metaphysics. This one's going to be about metaphysics and the way I see what life is about and all that. And I took those down and I'm going to kind of try to consolidate what I said in those videos. Uh, the way I see things, the purpose of life. I believe metaphysics is the way. I don't want people to misunderstand that and think that it has to do with new ageism and all that. So called law of attraction, law of assumption, things like that. It's not that you're trying to attract anything or manifest anything in life with your mind. The New Thought mo Movement, which I've read quite a few New Thought books from the late 1800s, early 1900s. All those books were about, and a lot of your mysticism and things like that, even some of your occult, uh, left-hand path, or things like that. They mean well, but it, to them, it's all about you know what you focus on is what you attract, or what you create, or what manifests. Well, a better way to explain that is awareness, because there's only consciousness. There is only one mind, the whole universe, if you will. There's nothing but one mind. It's like we live in the brain of God. Although there's no God, no being that actually wants to be worshipped. It's just one supreme mind and we are all tentacles of that one mind. We are all drops of that ocean and we are all, we are all the ocean. We are all that is. There's no trying to make yourself perfect or fix yourself or overcome things or clear blockages or healing and all this other shit. That's one thing that helps you out in this life existence, this journey, life journey, if you will. It, it can help you to uh, kind of look at some things in your past and, uh, you know, reevaluate and see them from a better perspective. Uh, but you don't have to heal and do all this kind of crap. All you need to do is change perspective because you're nothing but a tentacle of the one mind. You are an expression of the one mind. Uh, we're all sons and daughters of God, if you will. We're all expressions of the one mind in different versions. Now, I believe that we only have, we have a freedom, but it's only one freedom. And that freedom is the only freedom we need. Because I see us as experiencer nodes of the one, different versions of the one in human form experiencing itself and having different experiences but in that experiencing or the experiencing that we do of the different things we do in our lives and experience we have the freedom to choose what we're going to experience and how we how we choose what we're going to experience is by choosing what we're aware of what we like, if you're aware of being chronically ill or with a disease, then that's true for you. If you're aware of being happily unmarried or lonely or whatever, then that's true for you. If you're aware of, of financially struggling or whatever, then that's true for you. But because you're nothing but mind, all you have to do, you don't have to do any manifesting techniques, no state akin to sleep, which is the hypnagogic state technique, no magic techniques, no pagan techniques, none of that sort of thing. The only thing you need to do is shift awareness or your focus. Instead of thinking from a state of illness or poverty or unhappiness or whatever, think from a state of having the thing that you want. This is not delusionary thinking. It's just simply, how would I see the world, how would I feel if I was thinking from and living, I actually had that thing that I want or experiencing that thing or whatever, the health that I want, the wealth, whatever it is. Now these, I just want to say real quick, these are not my ideas alone. I've got this from studying new thought thinkers to law, to um, people like Florence Scovel Shen, Neville Goddard, uh, and, uh, and many others. And through my own practical experience in life, I have found 
that if you are aware of a thing, that's going to be true for you. If you change and say, I'm just going to be aware and think, just enjoy the thought that I'm wealthy, even though my bank account is showing something different, that I, I have all the money that I need and, and, and everything to pay my bills and to enjoy the things I want, or whatever it is, health, whatever, you're happily in a relationship, marriage, whatever, just simply just accept that as the fact for you, and whatever is going on in the mid midtime, don't worry about it. To say, well, this is, you know, that's just what it is right now. But I am a person who, let's just pretend I've already seen the future, right? And I've seen the future that, you know, uh, like my wife and I, we want to own our own home. Okay? And we want to own our own home. And it's a certain type of home we want. And in a certain region of America that we want it in. Okay? But we don't want to have to be deep in debt for it and all these other sorts of things, right? So, we feel as if we already own that home. We're, we're not living like that uh, at, this, at this very moment, but we feel, we enjoy the feeling of it as if it already is. We're aware that we're that way. Whereas opposed to being aware that you don't have it and you're frustrated or, you know, depressed or feel like you got to struggle. It's simply awareness. There is nothing but consciousness. And whatever you're conscious of, or consciously aware of, or aware of, that is what is true for you. Now, there's two things that Neville Goddard taught. Everyone talks about the law of assumption, because that's what he talked about. They taught, the, the two things that he taught that's most important is not the state akin to sleep, hypnagogic, trying to self-hypnotize yourself into believing something is true. Oh, by the way, you don't have to reprogram your subconscious. The new thoughters and all that, they meant well, but this bullshit. You don't have to reprogram repro nothing, just like the new agers are always telling you you got to heal your blockages and clear your chakras and, and, and uh, um, you know, clear out your karma and all this horseshit bullshit. Well, it's the same thing is you don't have to do techniques to make anything manifest. You just simply have to shift your awareness. And you shift your awareness. You now, some people say, well, I did it one time. I did a technique. Well, that's because you believed in the technique. Christians will have to say a prayer, and they'll really believe in their prayer. They'll believe God heard their prayer, whatever. So they're now in the awareness that whatever they prayed for is already a, is a fact, has already happened. Okay? So it's about awareness it's not about whether your technique or what god you worship or if you sacrifice an animal on an altar in a pagan ritual or whatever it is all of that is just little tricks you use for yourself to get yourself to stay in the awareness that what it is that you're seeking or wanting or needing is already a fact and that the present situation has no bearings on the fact that you have what it is you want or need because there's nothing but conscious awareness. There is nothing else. This world is a dream. Think of it as you're a note of God dreaming, and God is dreaming through all of us. Because that's basically what it is, except there is no God. There is only the one mind, the one consciousness behind all things, behind all this seeming earth life and nature and things like that. It's all intelligence. And that's why I could never be an atheist all my life, I could never be an atheist because I, it was clear to me there was superior intelligence. There was some intelligence behind all things. And then when you see things that are synchronicities, Carl Jung talked about that, the true father of psychology, in my opinion, who also understood metaphysics. He'd seen synchronicities. He understood that synchronicities were a reality. Not, they aren't just mere quinky-dinkies or coincidences. And what this is, it's not signs, you know. What it is is just... It's showing you where you are, let's say vibrationally or frequency-wise, what state you're in. Because Neville taught two things that were very, very, very important. If you never learned anything else from Neville Goddard, and you don't really need to learn anything else from Neville Goddard, and trust me, I've read the stuff over and over, listen to the audios of it, listen to other people teach it for years now. Neville Goddard taught two things that I think are the most important that almost nobody really teaches. One, there is nothing but states, states of consciousness, states of poverty, states of wealth, states of health, states of illness, 
states of having the new puppy that you want to states of not having the puppy dog you want. There's nothing but states. States of awareness. That's all in the one mind. And the other thing that he taught that is so important is that you can do nothing and that it is a myth that you can do anything. As a matter of fact, Neville, I don't remember the exact quote. I don't have it here in front of me. But he, he clearly said, if somebody tries to tell you how to get wealth or anything like that, do not pay attention to them. Because unless they're telling you their story, that's cool. But do not tell anybody because one person's path to health, wealth, or whatever may be something totally different for you. So there's... So trying to follow someone's formula to get something is not the way. Not saying it may not be similar, but it is not necessarily the way. Okay? How I manifested, and you don't manifest anything, how I was in the awareness of being happily married, and I have been for uh, going on seven years now, or over seven years, I'm sorry, over seven years now, uh, I've been happily married to the wife of my dreams, it's because I got into the state that I was happily married when there was, I didn't even know her when I was single and had no one. I just got into the state. I stopped looking. I stopped trying to make anything happen. I didn't use dating apps. I didn't ask anybody, hey, do you know anybody single, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even bother with it. I just put myself in the state of happily married. And she came into my life in a very miraculous and funny way. And we got together and we've been together ever since. It's been absolute bliss. Marital bliss. But for her and I, we've been through some hard times together, but not with each other. Okay, we we have only grown stronger. She's my best friend. I'm her best friend. And that can go into what I believe about marriage, but that's a different video. Another thinking out loud video. <laughs> some other time maybe. But we are experiencer nodes of the one. The one mind. We're little micro minds. We're little tentacles of, of the one mind. Experiencing things in different ways. But we have the freedom to choose what it is that we're aware of. Experience by what we choose to be aware of. Every day, every moment. And there is only one moment. The eternal now. And there is the only place is here and now. There is no places out there. Heaven is not no place to go. There is no there is no time. Everything is all at once. And you choose you get to choose what is true for you. And if you ignore outer circumstances and pay attention to just who you're being right now. Are you being the wealthy person, the healthy person in your mind? You're not trying to force anything, make anything manifest. You're just going to be that person in your mind. Just enjoy the feeling of being that healthy person that doesn't have that disease issue or that financial issue or is, just can't seem to find the kind of puppy dog you want, the dog you want to raise. You just be that person. Just enjoy it. The person with the kind of car or job or whatever it is that you want. You just be that person. That's all you need to do. Just be. It's not about acting in front of other people or faking it till you make it. That's all horse shit. It's simply about who are you being at your core. And you just know, don't let circumstances bother you. Now, there are only states, Neville taught. There is only states. That's it. And you can do nothing, he taught. Now, people will argue and say, well, you still got to do physical action. Neville already clearly explained that any action you take, you will take automatically. Like when I found my dream wife. Okay, after many failed marriages and relationships in my life, I, she came into my life when I stopped trying and I just started being. And the actions that I took, they just took. I spoke to her, just wasn't even thinking anything. I was just talking to her, just going to have a conversation with her about something. And we just hit it off. Okay, well, that happened. I didn't force anything. And she and I lived very far apart. I didn't know that uh, we would even get together. And if you think about it in life, all the good stuff that comes to you, you didn't have to force or fight to make anything work. It just happens. 
It just happens because you're in that state. You notice when you just give up, seemingly give up on trying and just kind of forget about what it is you want at the moment, uh, just all of a sudden, just like, boom, it flows to you. Now, well, that has to do with energy. You want to talk about blockages. Trying to figure things out and try to fight things out and force things out. Is It's kind of like they talk about if you have to force a, sh a fart out, it's probably going to be shit. You're going to shard on yourself. Well, that's true. Don't force anything in life. We've all been misled by people who were misled previous, parents and parents, parents, teachers, people in society, and things like that who mean well. Most of them mean well. But they'll try to tell you you gotta work hard, you gotta force things, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. No. Oh, uh, this job here, best paying job I've ever had. Um, it requires a very high level of skill and high level of uh, responsibility and things like that. I didn't even know this job existed. Uh, and that this opening existed and um, it just it came along it was just offered to me and I didn't have to make hardly I didn't have to make any effort or nothing people had went before me it's kind of like in the Bible it talks about God will go before you you know and, 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 and clear the land of the enemy and things like that and it says that in Exodus and Old Testament well that, that's literally what happened Seemingly, God will make a way for you. What it is is superior intelligence. The superior intelligence that makes nature work so wonderfully and keeps atoms together and things like that. It does all this wonderful stuff. Will also operate your life. You are a tentacle of that superior one. You are God in human flesh. You are a Jesus Christ, to speak from a Christian point of view, right? Or Christian biblical New Testament lingo. So. When you understand that there's nothing but consciousness, and it's what you're consciously aware of, if you're needing a new car, if you need somebody to work on your car, or you need money to work get your car, work on your car, just being the awareness that it already is, that everything is already okay, everything is taken care of, and watch what happens. You ever notice that? And you'd be stressed and worrying about something, you just stop worrying about it. You're like, oh, I don't know. Uh, religious people say, I'll just let God take care of it, and they really mean it. They just let go of all that stress. They let that energy flow towards them. They stop restricting the flow. And it just it, things just work out for them. Right? This is the world of miracles. This is the we're here not to struggle and fight. I had to learn that. We're here to enjoy our existence. Now, people will talk about being creators or co-creators with source. You're not co-creating, not really. You're simply choosing. Now, I liken it kind of like a big wide fucking major highway your life is your earthly life your human life and it has like multiple lanes into it like hundreds of lanes or whatever and each lane is a probability for you over on the far over here in the right it can be the worst negative horrible life because that's what you're aware of you're always just thinking of the negative way on the, in the middle is the kind of you settling you know for things in life and kind of get some of the stuff you want some stuff you just grumble about and you never get and then over on the far left the fast lanes and stuff is where you just allow things to work for you. People talk about there's multiple yous simultaneous throughout the universe. No, there's not. There's no need. That's wasted. That's entropy. That's wasted uh, information. Because I do believe that the one mind, source, God, is kind of like a computer in a metaphysical sense. And it doesn't waste. It doesn't need to waste. But there is a possibility or probability for you certain probabilities and possibilities for the particular human that you're playing. If you're a really, really short person, I, I doubt that you're going to be a, you know, a famous basketball player. There's certain things you're never going to be, it's never going to be possible for you. But here's the thing, you'll never be disappointed. Because if you don't desire it, truly desire it, it's not for you anyway. It's not in the potential lanes. To me, there's potentials. There's not multiple use in multiple universes. There's potential lanes you can get in and those realities become active, if that makes sense to you. That's the way I, I, the way I look at it. But anywho, the main point is, is that if you desire it, it's already yours. It's your job to get in the awareness and accept that it's a done deal. Unless, instead of staying in the awareness of, oh, let me try to figure out how it's going to happen and how I need to make it happen. No, you don't. You don't do any of that. You simply, the only thing you need to do, if you do anything, is simply just stay in the awareness that you've got what you want. My wife and I, we practice, we're just in the awareness that we have our dream home that we want. Okay? We're not renting or anything like that. We're, 
we are in our dream home and we already have written down and just talk talk uh, amongst the two of us what our dream home would be like the characteristics and things like that many a person has quote manifested or experienced their dream home that way by they just simply trusting and allowing and allowing superior intelligence the father mind if you will as we are the sons and daughters of this one mind the tentacles of it because we're not separate from it we're not separate from each other there's only one mind there is nothing else or as Neville Goddard would say there is nothing but God and there is only one God well there's only one mind and we're just simply tentacles of it we are connected to everything every speck of dust gray, uh, every every bug and insect every bird we are connected to all of nature through the one mind that's why nothing can happen to you unless it's part of your life uh, highway and the uh, lanes that you have chosen the awarenesses that you have chosen so all we have the only freedom we have is to choose what we're going to be aware of and we can do nothing but that that's the only thing we can do, is choose. So I choose to be aware and be the man in, in my inner mind that, and in my heart that I own my dream home. My wife and I live in our dream home, in the dream area we want it, everything. We love it. And it was easily, uh, it was easily purchased and things like that. No struggling with you know credit ratings and things like that is what I'm saying. Well, the same way that I did with finding my dream wife. And just like this job here, okay? I had a job. <laughs> it was not a job that I was crazy about, but I did it. Did it to the best of my ability. But, because of other things I have chosen, this job here was literally landed in my lap. And I've had great jobs in my past when it was appropriate times. That jobs would just land in my lap I didn't even know existed and people would come get me for the job and I would get good pay and I was happy at the job well this job here this job here uh, I was recommended for and this job for a loader operator uh, with my loader backhoe experience and some uh, some skid loader experience and uh, forklift experience when I was younger uh, this job here I was recommended for and the owner of the company, which this is a very large company I work for, by the way, the owner of the company himself knew I was coming, and the man right underneath him, his operations manager, knew about me, and I was hired, and then the manager for the store. I was immediately hired when they had other applications, and I, since I have been here, I haven't even been here a year and a half, and I've had over six dollars in raises because I have done things that actually have never been done with this company at this particular location. So, that's a blessing. It all just works out, you see. And so, that's just another example. Things will work out for you if you stop trying and if you just start, I know that know sounds corny, start believing. It's not about belief. It's really not what your beliefs are, by the way. It's not your beliefs that manifest. It's your awareness. What are you aware of? You can claim you believe one thing, but what are you aware of? If you're aware of something being the truth, well, this is what I believe, but here's the, you know, here's the facts, or this is how I feel, then that is what you're aware of. Beliefs can be deceptive. And hope, hope is just, uh, I heard a, a metaphysics guy on YouTube, he always says, and I, and I have to agree with it, hope is nothing but turd with icing on it. Hope is uh, there's another guy who teaches uh, metaphysical things and kind of famous. I can't remember his name right now, but he talked. They said that uh, hope is is leaving an open doubt, leaving open the opportunity of it not happening. It's not hope. It's not belief. It is knowing, and the knowing simply comes from so, knowing comes from the state that you have chosen that it's already a done deal. So one way to look at it is like you've been through a, a, a time machine and you got to see yourself in the future, maybe near future, and you got that puppy you've been looking for, or that thoroughbred horse you've been looking for, or that lottery win, or that uh, job you've been wanting, or job promotion, or that health situation taken care of. 
you, you already know it's a done deal. So right now you'd be, how would you act? How would you be, as Neville Goddard would say, how would you feel, or how would you see the world if your wish were fulfilled? And that is literally what you do. That's the state. You choose the state as if it's uh, that would represent the thing that you want is already a done deal. So how do you deal with the present world when um, it's physically, in the 3D as they say, it isn't physically true right now? Well, the way you look at it is you say, well, the 3D world is just a reflection of my inner world. It is a mirror. And things things may take some time to just stay. It doesn't matter. It, it, it will take the right amount of time. How about that? It will literally take the exact amount of time it needs to take. But no matter what, if you're unbreakable, be unbreakable about how you feel. Be unbreakable. Just know it's a done deal. You got what you want. And if it takes a few days, sometimes things only take a few hours. They'll just change over. Okay? A few days. Some people change their state of awareness, being homeless or ill, and with hours it changes. But sometimes it's days or weeks or months. Certain things take years, but it'll always make sense to you why it takes years after it happens. You'll say, yeah, I see why that took so many years, right? So, uh, I was wanting to be happily married many years ago in other relationships. And it was because there were things that I, part of being happily married was being the person and the husband material that I really wanted to be. And I had to learn those things. So some things may take years or even decades, but don't worry about it. They will always come at the right time. But you just stay in the awareness and, and don't bend, break, or bust. Don't bow. So... You simply stay in the, the state of awareness, and if you go, you get down or frustrated, and you find yourself kind of bumping out of the state or whatever, or the, 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 of that thought. Don't worry about it. Don't don't worry about it. Just say, yeah, you know, and go back, go right back to being in the state of what you want is true, is real. That's all it is, and that's when you will find that life is nothing but a mind game, the game of life. It's not a war. It's not a struggle about survival. It's not about trying to please some god or anything like that. Life is a mind game. And it's a fun one. When you realize that all you have to do is choose the things that you desire. Because if you desire them, they're possible for you. And all you have to do is just be in the awareness that it's done. And it will come. There were many times where my, my present wife was actually prophesied. Attributes about her. Even her name. Uh, some things about what she looked like. I seen her in a vision a few years before we got together. Didn't realize it till after we got together that it was her. But the point being is that what's most important is that she was you, what you want is always yours right now. There may be some things that have to happen, some 3D earthly things to play out, but don't worry about it. You just hang on. And I never gave up on the dream of being happily married. Okay? There's two things when I was young that I had dream of when I was a young man, young fella. One of them was to be happily married to my dream wife, to be close with my wife, and two, to live in a certain type of house in a certain uh, area. It would be a remote country area, put it that way. Um, but I already had it in my head. And then, I'm, uh, by the way, I meet my, my wife when we met over seven years ago. Uh, we described what we'd like to have, what we wanted out of life. We described a lot of things and talked about a lot of things. And one of the things we talked about is our dream home. And I was blown away because what I want in a home is very unique. It's the style home I want. And I found out she literally had had the same thoughts and, and ideas years previous. So it was all working out the whole time. It's kind of like the footprints in the sand poem. Where sometimes you feel like you're walking alone. The whole time, higher consciousness, or Jesus Christ, is carrying you. God is carrying you. So life is a mind game. And it's, it's not a mind fuck. It's a mind game. So, that's it for this uh, thinking out loud. And I'll do other thinking out louds because I'm always thinking about different things in life. <laughs> and I just want to get my thoughts out. Uh, but anyhow, I don't know if anybody will watch these videos except for my wife, but that is what it is. Um, if you ever want to contact me, you know how to find my email. I mean, it's YouTube. It's not hard to find my email. 